How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and in the last couple of videos we've used TIA Portal in order to program our S7-1200 series PLC. We went online and we also connected some inputs, driven some outputs on actual hardware. This time we're going back to a simulation in which we're going to explore a few more advanced instructions and then we're going to simulate and write a program that's going to be simulating a mixing process and last but not least, we're going to go online with our simulation and troubleshoot some of the issues we might encounter in the field. Without any further delay, let's get started. Now, one of the things I want to cover in this lecture is under program blocks. So in the previous project that we've created, we've always had a main. And in this case, we're going to create what's called a function block in order to contain our program and allow us to duplicate the code if we desire to do so. Now, to create a new function block, we can either double click on add new block or we can right click program blocks and select add new block, which is the exact same button. We're going to have four different options. So the first one is the organization block, which is exactly the type of main based on the symbol as well as the parentheses description of OB. There are multiple reasons why you would want to use organizational blocks. As you can see here, you can select from various different implementations contained in TIA portal, many of which include the keyword interrupt, which means that the organization block can be called based on a specific condition including a time-based repetition or a hardware interrupt which comes from outside of the actual PLC which becomes really interesting. You'll also have some motion control as you can see here at the bottom that you would be required to use if you're doing any servo applications. That being said these are very repeatable instructions that are going to be executed based on a highly timed fashion. That being said our next option is a function block and we want to know the difference between a function block and a function, which was one of my questions coming from the Rockwell side of things. And you'll notice that there's going to be one important phrase which says without dedicated memory. And so in essence, the difference is that a function is going to contain all elements that cannot be accessed from the outside. So essentially you only have inputs and then outputs being thrown out of the function once it has finished processing. So in other words, if we create a function block, we can access the different variables of our system from the external program. And that's exactly what we're looking to do. And last but not least, we have the data block. So in the last videos, I've shown you how to create your tags in either memory, input, or output bits. That being said, the data block is the best way to create tags. So this is going to create a tag structure that we can then populate with tags just as we've done before. That being said, I'm going to select the function block and I'm going to give it a name. So this is going to be mixer and I'm going to press on OK. Once again, the advantage of that is that I can create multiple instances of a mixer inside of any other program. Once the program is open, you may not always have this tag window that you see on my screen. So if you want to drag this down in order to get the same view, that would be ideal. That being said, we have our tag definitions on top of our program. So we're going to be starting by defining a few inputs, a few outputs, and then we can also define a few other types as needed. So I'm going to dive into network number one, and I want to build the exact same logic as we've done in the last couple of videos, which is a system starter. So I'm going to create the exact same logic and you can create tags in two different ways. So you can either go into this top section and say that my system start is going to be an input into my function block and create it like so. So that's going to be a Boolean and then you can come down here and say system start. You can also just type the name in inside of your tag so system stop and then right click the tag define tag and in this case this is also going to be an input press on define and then here we have a system running so system running is not going to be an input or an output so i'm going to define this tag and instead of doing input and output like i said this is going to be a static so i'm going to define it the first step of the mixing process is going to be to load our tank. So as soon as the system is running, we want to start the filling process. So I'm going to create an XIC when the system is running. 
we're going to start filling and that's going to be based on a timer. So what I'm going to refer back to is on the right hand side on the, the basic instructions, we can expand this timer operations and we can certainly use a number of different ways to create the logic, but I'm going to drag out a T on instruction into my network number two. I'm going to create a new data block that's going to reference the timer, press on okay. And we have the timer instruction. Now, before we move on to the timer itself, I just want to say that this is tank filled. So when the timer is done, I have completed the tank filling process. That's the indication here. I'm just going to right click this and I'm going to define tag. This is going to be an output. Press on define. The timers are specified in a much different way in Siemens than they are in Allen Bradley. So if you create a tag, you can certainly pass information to it. But what you can also do is, as you would in once again, RS logics, you can define a set time value that you want your timer to retain. So that's done by a string. So I'm going to type in T hash. And then here I'm going to specify as an example, the number of hours. So I can put four hours underscore 36 minutes underscore 56 seconds and 200 milliseconds. And that will allow me to create a timer that's going to count for that exact time. Now, of course, you can manipulate this to any way you'd want, but I'm going to erase all of this and I want my filling to be completed in 20 seconds for simulation purposes. And the next tag that we have here is the elapsed time. So in the elapsed time, you can store the value just like you would see the timer count up in RS logics. You can store that value in a double integer or an integer for that matter. That being said, it is not required. Once the tank has been filled, it's time to mix our tank. So I'm going to navigate into network three and I'm going to create the XIC instruction, which is going to reference that same tag. And here we're going to create another timer. So once again, we're going to drag out the T on instruction. We're going to create a new data block that's going to be separate for this specific timer. And in this case, just for demonstration purposes, this is going to be 30 seconds. So T hashtag 30 S we're going to say that this is tank has been. So tank mixed. So the process has been completed. So tank mixed, I can right click this and I can define my tag just like we've done before. So this is going to be an output. We're going to press on. Okay. Once the tank has been mixed, we want to bring the tank up to temperature. So just like we did before, I just want to create the third phase of our mixing process. So tank mixed. Once again, we're going to use a T on instruction. And of course, this can be written in many different ways, but we've got a third timer and then we're going to create an output. So this is going to be tank ready. So once the tank has been filled has been mixed and has been brought up to temperature. And of course we can add some, some notes in here. So T hashtag 20 seconds, actually let's make that 10 just to create a quicker process. So define tag, this is going to be an output. We're going to click on define. So this is tank getting up to temperature. And you can leave comments in every single network. And at this point, our system is pretty much done. So the tank is ready. The system is still running. Once the system toggles back to being stopped, all of these bits are going to unlatch. So let's go back to our main and see how we can implement this function block. Inside of main, we currently have absolutely no logic written. So what I can do is I can grab my mixer and I can drag it into my network one. And what you'll notice happen is that first of all, we're going to create a data block that's going to be only referenced with a single instance of our mixer. So this is going to be mixer number one that's going to be created under this condition. And so here we need to create some system start. We need to create a system stop. And then we need to energize certain external devices based on the status of our tank.
Just as we've done in the past, here we can define some of the hardware components that would be tied to the mixer. So for system start, we're going to have PB underscore, let's say 100 underscore start. So this is a external push button that's going to start our system. Here we've got PB underscore 101 stop. And then once the tank is, so once the system is started, we need to fill the tank. And I want to demonstrate that there's a way to go and access the bits that are inside of our system, even though they are not written as outputs. So what I can do here is I can add another, I'm going to create a branch of my logic. I'm going to add an XIC instruction. And here I can enter mixer. And you'll notice that it's going to reference the database that was created for that purpose. So I can press on tab and here I can select system running. So system running is going to be my XIC and I can add an XIO that's going to be called on my tank filled. So while the tank is not filled, we need to fill the tank. So similarly, so mixer DB tank is not filled. We're going to energize a valve. So I'm going to write an OTE. This is going to come back in. So this as an example, so valve, valve underscore 102 fill. So this is our fill valve created like that. We're going to create a few tags. So define tag, we can certainly define them as global inputs and outputs. So typically a start push button is going to be an input. I'm going to write it to this address and then leave it in the default that uh, tag table. That's fine. The stop is going to be the exact same thing. So right click, right click the stop define tag. So this is going to be another input Boolean perfect. And then the valve is going to be an output define tag. Click on create. And of course, we still need to energize other things. So once the tank is filled, we want to energize a mixer. So the mixer is going to be in operation while it the tank has been still not finished mixing, but also while the tank is getting up to temperature. So we can use the endpoints that we've created of our function block and put that valve right there. So tank has been filled. We want to energize a valve underscore 103. And this is going to be actually it's not going to be a valve. So this is a MC motor contactor. And this is going to be 103. And this is going to be mixer. So it's going to be a motor contactor that's going to mix our tank, right click define tag. Hypothetically, this would be tied to our, our output number two, press on Yes. And once the tank is mixed, we need to bring this up to temperature. So once again, once the tank is mixed, we can add here. So this is going to be a relay. So relay 104, which energizes a heater. So I'm going to give it a descriptive name, relay 104 heater. And that's going to be tied to our out output define. And last but not least, when the tank is ready, so all these processes are still in place because of the way we've written our logic, this is going to energize an LED. So once the tank is ready to be processed or be brought to the next step of the operation, LED 105, 105 underscore system ready. Actually, process complete give it a more descriptive name. So process complete define tag. And that's going to also be an output press on the fine. And at this point, we are ready to test the logic. So what we can do is we can press on start simulation. So once we are connected to our simulated PLC, we can use a force table exclusively to toggle the start and stop push button, because in a real world, these would be tied to hardwired push buttons. Now, this is not the right way to simulate tags and to toggle tags in a real world scenario, you should be pressing the actual button of the system. That being said, what we can do is we can add, as I've said, the start and the stop. And we can also monitor our system. So I'm going to press on this monitoring on button. And I'm going to see the current state of all of the tags that are coming in and out of the function block of our mixer. So I can start the simulation by right clicking the start button and then forcing that to, to one. 
we're going to notice that the state is immediately changed to true and we are currently filling our tank as indicated here within 10 seconds we should also see the mixer come on because the tank has been filled as shown right here so that has been changed to true in 10 more seconds the heater is going to turn on and our relay is going to be energized and in the last 10 seconds once that's finalized the process will be completed i have misspelled the led description so that's all our, our process using a function block i can then right click this and force this back to zero or stop forcing all together and the system will be back to the original value now of course at this point the system is going to show that it has been completed we do need to force the stop which is going to be a push button once again pressed by an operator so we in this case we're going to force that to one and that's going to be clearing our system based on the status. I can then remove forcing all together in our program. Now, one thing that I've also wanted to demonstrate in TIA portal, since we had this question in the past, if you go into your mixer and if you make certain changes to the program, then how do you make sure that the changes are going to be written into the online program? So I'm going to close this forcing window and point out a couple of things. So if we are in the offline file or we're doing offline edits, this top bar is going to be this dark blue color. If we're going to monitor the system, just as we've done a few seconds ago, you'll notice that it turns orange, which means that we are connected to the PLC. The other thing to pay attention to is that on the left hand side, my programs are all with a labeled with a green circle and it says okay which means that they are identical in the offline as well as the online files as soon as i make a change so for example if i change my timer number one to 15 seconds and i press enter you'll notice that the symbol turns this this blue and orange color and it points out that the online and offline files are going to be different which essentially means that the plc is running the 10 second timer while you are looking at an offline file that is looking at a 15 second timer so there's certainly a difference and there's ways to compare what is different between online and offline however what you want to do in order to make sure that it is the same is select that specific routine and here you can press on download to device or you can press upload from devi device which will either load the program that you have offline into the plc or bring the program from the plc into your offline file in my case i want to keep the change so i'm going to download to the device and so here I'm going to press on load. That's going to double check the changes. And once again, my circle is green. And just like that, you can do anything you would desire to do. So here I can add an XIC instruction as an example. And this is going to be tank filled. Obviously, this logic isn't going to work since it's referencing the same tag. It's energizing. That being said, I just want to demonstrate that once again, we have a difference between the two programs. And at this point, we can download to the PLC and we will be loading that program. And so the circle is going to go back to green. If you have any other questions, make sure to post them in the comments or in the forum section, and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible.